We must also invest more in our security and defense. Russia is still on the offensive in eastern Ukraine. They are banking on a war of attrition, on making the next winter even harsher than the last. Russia is banking on Europe and the West going soft. And some in Europe are playing along. Two weeks ago, a European Union prime minister went to Moscow. This so-called peace mission was nothing but an appeasement mission. This was a plain appeasement mission. This is my video update on this Thursday, midday, July the 18th. Let's talk about some news and let's start things off with the reselection of Ursula von der Leyen as European Commission President. The vote will take place today. Most likely by the time I publish this video, the Parliament will have voted on who will become the European Commission president. Most likely, Ursula will get the votes to, to serve a second term as EC president. Ursula gave a speech to the parliament and she is demanding more war in Ukraine, more weapons and more money to Project Ukraine. And she blasted Viktor Orban for his shuttle diplomacy and peace mission. Ursula said that, that this was not a peace mission from Orban, but this was an appeasement mission, according to Ursula. She wouldn't even say Orban's name. She just said a prime minister from an EU country. She refused to say Orban's name. And then she said, this was not a peace mission. This was an appeasement mission. Get it? Not a peace mission, an appeasement mission. It rhymes, you see? You see what Ursula's script writers did? Very, very clever from Ursula's script writers. Tatters, I tell you, tatters. <laughs> Not a peace mission, an appeasement mission. What a clever play on words, huh? Wow. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. So Ursula has the worst script writers, worse than Biden's script writers. Yeah, I think I think the EU, the EC script writers are as bad, if not worse, than Biden's script writers. Uh, not, not a peace mission. It is an appeasement mission. <laughs> so that was Ursula speaking at the parliament and uh, a thunderous applause from the parliament mem for the par from the parliament members as Ursula pushed for more war. They're very upset with Orban, very upset. Amazing, huh? So Politico, they ran with an article with the title, Will Maloney's Rage Torpedo van der Leyen's Second Term? It won't be easy for Italy's PM to back van der Leyen to remain European Commission president in Thursday's crucial vote. <laughs> Look at the featured image that they, that they use in this Politico article. <laughs> Ursula holding a crystal ball with Maloney in the crystal ball. <laughs> 
Oh my God. If globalists weren't so dangerous, <laughs> they, 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 they would be laughed at nonstop. If they weren't so freaking dangerous, they would be ridiculed nonstop. But uh, it's the fact that they have so much power and they're so dangerous that uh, <laughs> that is concerning. But, but man, are globalists ridiculous. Ursula with the crystal ball. <laughs> with Maloney in the crystal ball. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. We'll have the vote by this afternoon. I believe by the time this video goes up, we'll probably know if, if Ursula gets a second term. She'll get a second term. She has the votes, but uh, Politico is saying that Maloney, Maloney's uh, coalition will most likely vote against uh, Ursula for a second term because Maloney is uh, upset that none of her people got high-level positions in uh, the new EU administration. And, uh, and they ignored Maloney when they were wheeling and dealing for, for the foreign minister and the EU council president and all of these top level positions. They left Maloney and, and her people out of the loop. And maybe, maybe Politico says that Ursula may need some of Maloney's coalition votes because it's a secret ballot. And there is the possibility, uh, a small possibility, that some of the parliament members who Ursula believes will, will vote for her second term because it's a secret ballot, they may decide not to vote for Ursula, especially after the European court, the EU administrative court, they, uh, they are saying that there was some funny business with Ursula, the European Commission, and the Koof jabs. So this may be problematic for, for Ursula. We'll see by this afternoon what happens. And Peter Siarto, the foreign minister for Hungary, he is in New York attending the UN Council, Security Council meeting, and Siarto, he gave an interview to Ria Novosti and RT, and in his interview with Ria Novosti, Peter Siarto, he said that Ursula has done a terrible job as European Commission President. She should not be reelected. Why would you reelect someone who's incompetent and has destroyed Europe? Why do you reelect a person like that? And, uh, and she's been terrible for the European Union. And he's right. Why would you elect someone who has done such a terrible job? Well, maybe for Europe, she's done a terrible job. But for the big pharma companies, for the military industrial complex, for the globalists, for the United States, for the neocons, for the neocons in the United States, you could make the case that Ursula has done a great job for NATO. For NATO, she has done a great job. Keep Germany down, or maybe you could say keep Europe down, keep America in and keep Russia out. Anyway, that's what Siarto said in this interview. What else did Siarto say? He also said that it's obvious, it is so obvious that the pro-war politicians of the EU are unhappy with what we have been doing because they do not want peace. They want this war to be continued. They do not care about the escalation, but we do. He stressed that Hungary is used to such attacks, such kind of pressure. So we will continue our peace mission we will work in favor of a peaceful solution to the conflict between Russia and Ukraine because it is in Hungary's national interests. So all of this, this pressure on Hungary, the EU owes Hungary a whole bunch of money, something like 20 billion euros. 
which they're not giving to, to Hungary, the threats that they're going to remove Hungary's voting rights, unfazed, according to Peter Siarto. They're going to continue on their peace mission. On their appeasement mission, as Ursula calls it. <laughs> their appeasement mission. Ridiculous, huh? Ridiculous. So the parliament member from Cyprus, the independent EU parliament member, I think I can go in. No? Yeah, I think I can go in. The EU parliament member from Cyprus, Fidias, he put a poll up on Twitter X and he asked the question, do you want me to vote for Ursula von der Leyen to remain as president of the European Commission? Whatever you say, I will do. And 15% voted yes and 85% voted no. 120,000 plus votes. So he is going to vote no for Ursula as EC president. The Austrian uh, chancellor, he said that the boycott of Hungary is, uh, is not productive and that Austria is against boycotting Hungary, which would mean that Austria is against removing Hungary's voting rights. And uh, the chancellor of Austria is 100% correct. He is absolutely correct because if they manage to remove Hungary's voting rights, which I believe needs an, a majority in, uh, in the European Council, not, not a majority, I think, it, I think it needs all of the countries in the European Council to approve this, to approve removing Hungary's voting rights. Austria will never, never do this because once they remove Hungary's voting rights, well, they're going to come after Austria's voting rights. So that's the statement from the Chancellor of Austria. Look at those bees. Amazing, huh? Just don't sting me. So that is what Austria's chancellor said. Now let's move on to, to Biden and the news that Biden, while he was in Las Vegas, he tested positive for the COOF. Yep, he tested positive for the COOF and he is now going into hiding, I guess. And we are getting reports that the Harris clan Harris supporters, they are, they are once again pressing the Biden oligarchy to, to step aside and allow Harris to become the Democrat candidate for November 2024. This is according to the Financial Times and a lot of U.S. Collective West mainstream media outlets. They're making another push to get Biden to step down the Harris camp, which is the Obama camp, because Obama, in my opinion, Obama is behind Harris. And so they're trying to get Biden to step down. Pelosi actually said that, or there are reports that Pelosi told the Biden oligarchy that you cannot win. So it's time for you to step aside. Maybe, maybe this, this whole coup thing is, is in preparation for Biden to, to step down. I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. I read, uh, I read some reports saying that, that the Biden oligarchy is uh, staying put. They are not going to drop out. So those are the latest reports with Biden. MSNBC, Joy Reid, she, uh, <laughs> this is crazy. This is so ridiculous, man. Joy Reid, she, uh, she was, Speaking to Jen uh, Psaki, circle back Psaki, and Joy Reid compared Biden's coup to Trump's uh, assassination attempt. 
<laughs> she said, if, if Trump is heroic for surviving the assassination attempt, well, given Biden's age, shouldn't this COOF uh, diagnosis also be seen as heroic? <laughs> clown world, everybody. We live in a clown world. So speaking about the assassination attempt, we have more information coming from the, the Secret Service. From what I understand, uh, Marsha Blackburn is saying that the Secret Service Senator, Marsha Blackburn, is saying that the Secret Service, they knew a good 10 minutes ahead of time that there was an armed gunman on the roof. I think, uh, I think the Secret Service Director, what's her name, Cheetal? Interesting name, Ch Cheetal, C-H-E-A-T-L-E. -E. Anyway, I don't, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that last name correctly, but um, I think she was speaking to, to some senators or some, uh, some Congress uh, representatives. And from what I understand, one second, the Secret Service knew that there was a gunman on that roof. There's a tweet from Colin Rugg. Just in, Secret Service was aware of the potential threat 10 minutes before Donald Trump took the stage in Pennsylvania, but let him go out anyway. The revelation was made during a Senate briefing today. Senator Marsha Blackburn says she was appalled to learn the Secret Service knew about a threat prior to President Trump walking on stage. I have no confidence in the leadership of Director Cheetal and believe it is in the best interest of our nation if she steps down from her position. Director Cheat. She told. <laughs> so that's, that's interesting. They knew 10 minutes, according to Blackburn. They knew 10 minutes ahead of time that there was a shooter on that roof, on that sloped, that sloped roof. And they still let Trump go out and speak. This is looking really bad. This is looking really, really bad for the Secret Service. Really bad. So Samantha Powers is in Armenia. That's not good for Armenia. Whenever Samantha Powers comes to your Samantha Power, Samantha Power. Is it Power or Powers? <laughs> One second. <laughs> I think it's Samantha Power. Yeah, Samantha Power. Anyway, whenever Samantha Power comes to your country, that's not good. Samantha Power is the light version of Newland, of Cookie's Newland. If Newland or Power, or at one point in time McCain, if they ever visited your country, then you know you're, you're, you're doomed. You've been targeted for destruction. And Power is in Armenia and we got reports that U.S. military advisors, commanders will be, will be stationed in Armenia, something like that. Military officials will now be stationed in Armenia and working with the Armenian military. So Armenia is, is moving quickly towards, towards NATO, towards the collective West, the United States. The U.S. has a huge embassy in Armenia. The U.S. Embassy in Armenia is, is a city inside of a city. It's the U.S. Embassy in Yerevan is a city, and then you have Yerevan. It's, it's a massive uh, U.S. Embassy. I've been to Yerevan many times, and the U.S. Embassy is huge. But uh, yeah, Armenia continues to not even drift, to move quickly towards NATO and, and the collective West. Georgia as well is being targeted by NATO and the collective West. It looks like the, the next move for NATO is going to be in the Caucasus. That's how it looks. As we said on many, on many videos on the Duran, me and Alexander, the plan from Pashinyan was to, to drop Nagorno-Karabakh, to get rid of Nagorno-Karabakh, 
And that's what he did. He got rid of it. He cut it loose. And once he cut it loose, the road was clear for Armenia to, to make its move, for Pashinyan to make his move towards NATO and the European Union. And that is exactly what is happening. So let's go back to Elensky and Project Ukraine. And we are getting reports from the French publication Le Parisien. How's my French pronunciation? Le Parisien. <laughs> Let me know in the comments down below. How's my French pronunciation? Le Parisien is reporting that Alensky wants Russia to refuse to participate in the negotiations, the second uh, peace summit negotiations, in order to blame Moscow for the lack of success in uh, trying to find a peaceful solution. That is what Le Parisien is reporting. That's the game, the game plan from Alensky. <laughs> These are children, the children. These are three-year-old kids. Alensky is a three-year-old child. That's what he is. If this story from Le Parisien is true, but they are saying that Alensky he is uh, saying that he wants a second peace summit, a second peace summit. And I want Russia to participate. And he wants a representative from the Russian Federation to participate in the second peace summit. And he is doing this because he is betting on the fact that Russia will not participate in the second peace summit. And when Russia doesn't participate in the Second Peace Summit, then Alensky will be able to go to the Collective West, will be able to approach all of the world, and he will be able to say, you see, we invited Russia to a Second Peace Summit, and Russia didn't show up, so therefore Russia is not interested in peace. Hey, give me money, give me weapons. That is the plan from Alensky. He's a child. He is a freaking child. And then we had this interview from Aristovich. Alexander talked about this in his video update yesterday. But the Aristovich, he said in this interview that the plan from the Ukraine military, and this is, this is crazy, this is wild if this is true. But uh, one time, Elensky BFF Aristovich, he claims that the Ukraine military is going to launch a big counter 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 offensive i don't know how many counter offensives the ukraine military has launched but they're going to launch another counter offensive knowing that this counter offensive will ultimately fail and once this counter offensive fails and the ukraine military is smashed then the Alensky regime and the ukraine military can can surrender they can say we're done it's over we tried it's time to capitulate and that's the, that's the off-ramp for Alensky and for the Ukraine military to launch a counter-offensive, to be smashed by Russia, and, uh, and it's game over. And, and if the counter-offensive is successful, the 0.001% chance that it's successful, well, then it's successful. And all is good. This is according to Aristovich. It sounds crazy. This sounds this sounds absolutely crazy. I'm, I'm not buying it, but that's what Aristovich is, is saying. So I think we can, we can enter clown world territory and we'll stick with Project Ukraine. And an article from The Economist with the title, Russia's vast stocks of Soviet weaponry are running out. We're back to this one. <laughs> we are back to this one. Russia is running out of weapons. Its stock of Soviet weapons, it's running out. <laughs> it is running out. Should I read you some of, some of this Economist article? For a long time, it seemed that a war of attrition between Ukraine and Russia with five times its population could only end one way. But the much vaunted Russian offensive against Kharkov in the north that started in May is fizzling out. Its advances elsewhere along the line, especially in the Donbass region, have been both strategically trivial and achieved only at huge cost. The question now is, is less whether Ukraine can stay in the fight and more how long can Russia maintain its current tempo of operations? And then, and then the Economist talks about how Russia is running out of 
out of everything, out of tanks, out of out of everything, and they're having to dip into their their Soviet uh, stockpile in order to keep up this war of attrition. <laughs> oh my God! In twenty years, if I'm still doing videos like this in twenty years, <laughs> we're gonna be we're gonna be talking about stories how Russia's running out of weapons. I'm going to be walking around some city, some city 20 years from now, and my clown world will be, uh, according to The Economist, Russia is running out of weapons. Oh, man. They're never going to let that one go, are they? They are never going to let that one go. All right, let's, uh, let's do one more clown world. And this one goes to Professor Biden. Biden's running away, running away with Clown World of the Year. I mean, he is running away with it. <laughs> There's no one even close to Professor Biden. So he was giving an interview. I don't know to, to which, to which uh, network he was giving this interview to. And Biden referred to, to Lloyd Austin, the Secretary of Defense, as the black man. That's what he said about the Secretary of Defense. Actually, Biden forgot his name. That's why Biden messed up. He was trying to, to say that he has hired um, a diverse cabinet. And he said the Secretary of Defense. And he forgot Lloyd Austin's name. And he, I think he wanted to say that he's hired Lloyd Austin, a black man. That's what I think he wanted to say, but he forgot Austin's name. And he said, Secretary of Defense, the black man, end quote. And so it's all about, it's all about treating people with dignity. And it's about making sure that we're coming, for example, look at the heat I'm getting. Because I, I named a, uh, the uh, Secretary of Defense, the black man. I named Katanji Brown. I mean, because of the people I've named. Anyway, that's Biden for you. I think the, the strategy that Jill and Hunter have put in place for Biden, which is to just get him to do as many interviews as he can, just get him in front of, uh, of the media as often as possible so that we can be desensitized to his gaffes, is actually working because I'm starting to become desensitized to his gaffes. <laughs> Anyway, that's the video, everybody. The Durant.locals.com. We are on Rumble, Odyssey, BitChute, Telegram, and Rockfin. And go to the Duran shop. Pick up some awesome merch like this t-shirt that I am wearing today. The link is in the description box down below. And, uh, and what else? Like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Let's get, uh, let's get to 205,000 subscribers on YouTube and 50,000 subscribers on Rumble. You can also follow me on Twitter. Take care. I will see you guys tomorrow.